here in Tucson. Our thoughts are with those in Paris on senior night. The Arizona Wildcats take the field as they welcome number 10 Utah to town. College football on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. And hello to everybody, Justin Kutcher alongside Petros Papadakis and Petros. Utah ranked number 10 right now in the country. One loss at USC. Are they a legit contender for the college football playoff? I think so. I mean, I believe that. In the Pac-12 South, nobody expected Utah to be there, and they're new to the conference, so a lot of people wrote them off after that USC loss, but they have a great coach in Kyle Whittingham, whose personality is very evident throughout all three phases, and they have a back that I absolutely love in Devontae Booker. We're talking about one of the most physical guys in the country, great with his upper body, a wild journey to get here to Utah, and he's better and better in the fourth quarter, a la Marshawn Lynch, and that's why they call him Book mode, not beast mode. They will need book mode tonight against an Arizona team that's been decimated by injuries. They've gone through five middle linebackers. Their own running back, Nick Wilson, missed most of the last four games. He's questionable. But a win tonight against number 10, Utah, that could make their season. That could. They got him here in their house on senior night, and then they have the duel in the desert against Arizona State, and that would be really good for Rich Rod's team. They're playing two quarterbacks right now this year. A new Solomon was one of those injuries against UCLA, and Gerard Randall was able to come in and really add a spark running the ball. Solomon's had a good year, not a great year. Passing at about 63%. We'll see both guys tonight. Randall is a lot of fun to watch when he gets in there in the zone read. This is a big game for both teams. Arizona has won the last three meetings. Utah looking for a win on the road in the Pac-12. Utah, Arizona kickoff is next here on FS1. Here in Tucson, the march to the stadium, the seniors here on senior night, a hug from head coach Rich Rodriguez. An emotional night for many of these players. 21 seniors honored before the game, including Will Parks, one of the leaders. Rich Rodriguez, the head coach for these Arizona Wildcats in his fourth year at the helm here in Tucson. Kyle Whittingham, the 2008 National Coach of the Year, his 11th season as the head coach of Utah. Utah won the toss. They have elected to defer, so Utah will kick off. Arizona will receive. Andy Phillips, a great story as a kicker for Utah was a member of the U.S. National Ski Team, came here a few years ago, and now all he is, one of the best kickers in the country. Back deep is Tyrell Johnson for Arizona. A late kick here in Tucson. And we are underway. Johnson from a yard deep in the end zone. And he returns it out to the 20-yard line. Petros, how about three things we need to know when Arizona has the ball? Well, you know they're going to go really, really fast, but you got a new Solomon. He has to keep that swagger that Arizona got in a loss in the Coliseum against USC. They were really happy with the way they played in that game. they got to find a back. Is Nick Wilson healthy enough to play? Is his foot okay? If it's going to be Jared Baker, they have to get that zone read going. And for Utah... Foot speed is very important defensively. They've got to be able to run sideline to sideline. This is a big defense. Is it a lumbering defense? We'll find out against these Cats. It is Nick Wilson in at tailback to start this game. Solomon in the shotgun. A high snap. Solomon able to handle it. And that was not a design play right there by Solomon. Looks like he just improvised. A new Solomon coming off a good game. Last week, 31 of 46, 352. You see those career passing touchdowns. How about this? In his career, only 12 picks in 819 attempts. He's been pretty solid here for Rich Rod in two years at a Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. Second down and one for Arizona. Solomon, his first pass, the back shoulder pass, and that is caught. David Richards with a nice catch. And a first down here for Arizona. Richards is having a pretty good senior year. He's thrown open against Hatfield, one of the better corners for Utah. Really thrown open by a new Solomon. He hit him on the back shoulder and fit it in there. He almost willed him to catch it. A 23-yard pickup. Beyond midfield at the 48 of Utah. So used to seeing Rich Rodriguez's teams move quickly. 
Solomon back to pass again. Taking a shot down the field, tripped up, and it's picked up. There is a flag. Justin Thomas picks it off. Tangled the feet. And let's see if it's going to be pass interference. Pretty clear when you get that arm out and that arm extends and the receiver goes down. Even if he did get tripped up, the flag is going to come out. I think it was Nate Phillips, the intended receiver. And there's Thomas. You see that push to the shoulder and is able to track the ball. It really did look like Phillips tripped over his own feet, but the extended arm is going to draw the flag every time. They're having a long conference about it, though. There are two fouls by the defense. Pass interference, defense number 12. That's the middle of the five. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 93. A 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. So here is the roughing the passer against the sophomore, Lowell Lotulelli. Yeah, and he hit him right with his head, and you can't you can't headbutt the quarterback. That's gonna face to face with the quarterback's gonna draw the flag as well. So Arizona marching down the field against this very good Utah defense at the 33 of Utah. Solomon, high throw, throws this one away. David Richards, the intended receiver. Second down and 10 coming up here for Arizona. A new Solomon. You saw those 352 number of yards last week. Three touchdowns, one interception. The 352, that was a season high. Running the option here. The pitch to Wilson. And Wilson gets tackled by Tevin Carter. Looks like Wilson will be two yards shy of that first down marker. He was a question mark coming into this game, and they need him badly. You see the way he finished this run? This is the physicality that Arizona needs against this Utah team, and Wilson provides it in the backfield. Third and two, and flags before. And it's going to be a false start here against Arizona. False start. Offense number one. That's against Caleb Jones, the team's leader in both receptions and yards this year. So now third and seven. Solomon, plenty of time. Wide open to his receiver and it's dropped. David Richards could not haul it in. He had the first down easily. And Anu really whipped it in there. And that's about the biggest fastball I've ever seen a new Solomon throw. And you can see his reaction there. Hard to be even keel as a quarterback, but it's really one of the most important things. That guy's got to be the same at the line of scrimmage every time to give that offense confidence. Casey Scourin now on for the field goal attempt. Scourin's kick. It is good from 47 yards out. So three quick points for Arizona. On senior night, they take a 3-0 lead against number 10, Utah. Beautiful scenery here in Arizona, and I was actually given word that that piece of property is for sale. If you want that view, you can have it. It's 3-0, Arizona leading Utah. <laughs> and this is what we have in store tonight. Well, you have a big defense that's strong, and really physical, one of the best in the conference, there's no doubt about it. And you have Rich Rod's offense, which is always going to be explosive, always going to be hard hitting, always going to have big plays. So it's a really good matchup, speed versus size and anger. Arizona starting at the 32, play action on first down. Solomon rolling out to his right. Pumps once, throws, and completes the pass to the far sideline to Nate Phillips. And Phillips gets seven yards, second down and three. You see the maturity there of Solomon doing a good job of being patient out on the edge, knowing he had time, pump faking, and throwing a catchable ball to Phillips that time. On second and three, pass incomplete. Justin Thomas cut in front. He had a look at it. David Richards, the intended receiver, third and three coming up. I'm not sure if anybody getting their hands on that ball would have caught it. I mean, a new Solomon has got a live arm tonight. He's throwing it hard in there. 
Third and three. Play action again. Another good pass zipped in there and caught for the first down by Caleb Jones. This is what the Cats do, Justin. They like to get it out to the perimeter, get you running out to the perimeter, and then they try to create vertical run lanes within that, well executed on third down. So a third down conversion. First and 10 from the 44 for the Wildcats. Run of the option again, the pitch to Wilson. And Wilson lowers that shoulder, and he's got himself a first down. He gets 11 yards. Second time we've seen Wilson be really physical on the perimeter in this option. Jared Norris can't be right. He's trying to cover Solomon, and there's a good block on the outside, and Wilson finishes that run with authority. Wilson had 218 yards and three touchdowns in last year's meeting. Solomon, a pump fake. Throws high. Nice catch. Hauled in by Caleb Jones again. Dominique Atfield there to stop him, a pickup of eight. Caleb Jones, the Texas transfer, really doing a great job of pulling that ball down. Hatfield is all over him in his shirt, really, and Jones can pull it. They've expected that from him all year long, and he's been a little bit disappointed. Looking good tonight. Second and two here for Arizona. Again, thrown out towards the sideline. A flag is thrown. Caleb Jones, the intended receiver. Hatfield there on the coverage. We're going to have pass interference. And they're really picking on Dominique Hatfield, the cornerback. Defense number 15. The ball will be placed at the start of the five. And that is first down. They're running option at him and blocking him with receivers where he has the responsibility for the pitch man. And they're really trying to get at him with back shoulder throws in one-on-one -on -one situations. That wasn't very different from the coverage on the previous play. First and 10 from the 30 of Utah here for Arizona. Solomon on the keeper. Solomon breaks a tackle. And he gets run out of bounds by Marcus Williams. A late flag comes in. A 16-yard run. And tack on some more. After the play, personal foul. Late hit. Defense number 20. A penalty is being forced. Half the distance to the goal. With an automatic first down. Look at number 51 here. Fanica misses the tackle. We talked about foot speed, and he's just not able to get out there in space to tackle Solomon, which leads to the bigger play, and then the personal foul on the back end of the play by Marcus Williams. Arizona, we expected him to come out with some fire, and they have, but you talked about executing and really pulling off touchdowns as opposed to field goals. This is important. First and goal from the seven. Solomon taking his time back in the end zone. Touchdown! Samaje Grants. A flag on the far side of the field in the end zone. Let's wait to see what these flags are for because there were two on the field. Land Clark, a referee, busy early on. After the play, unfortunately, conduct. Defense, number 15. The touchdown is now. Second penalty against Dominique Hatfield. Yeah, he's getting a little bit frustrated, and they've been picking on him, and there's the fake block by Jones, and he pulls up, and Hatfield, in front of two referees, gives him a little sock to the chin. Got to be more mature than that. Casey scouring on for the extra point. Much like last week at USC, a good start here tonight for the Arizona Wildcats. They got three on their opening drive, seven on this one. They lead 10 nothing. Penalties, including a personal foul on one series, and you're going to get spoken to on the sidelines. 10 nothing, Arizona leading Utah. The seven-yard touchdown catch by Samaje Grant from Anu Solomon. And a great start for these Wildcats. And Anu's really come out firing, throwing the ball hard, throwing it with authority, getting the guys up to the line of scrimmage. And Kyle Whittingham knows his defense can't afford to be out there too much longer with this Arizona offense. They need to generate some first downs and catch a breath. No chance for return here as this one goes through the end zone. A look at the season here for Utah. They got off to a good start, did 
This huge team as they beat Jim Harbaugh's Michigan Wolverines in the opener. This one kind of put them on the map, the upset over Oregon, when they just crushed them. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, they go and they lose against USC. But they've rebounded, and they still have a chance, like we spoke about in the open, about being a college football playoff team. Got to get their bearings right now offensively if they're going to do that. On first down, Travis Wilson swings it out. Dangerous pass. Covey makes the catch. Still on his feet. This guy's a playmaker for the Utes. And Britton Covey, the true freshman of Provo, Utah, gets eight. This guy's been a lot of fun to watch for Utes fans all year. He's going on a Mormon mission. He'll be back in 2018 after this season. Coach Whittingham's going to miss him badly, but he makes people miss. He gets it going on the outside and really creates an element of surprise and elusiveness that this Utes offense does not have without him. Second down and two. They swing it out. Bubba Poole. And Poole up to the 44, gets 12. The first down here for Utah. Jamar Allah with a tackle. Now Bubba Poole is another guy, a former back, but Devontae Booker has so much control of that backfield and they want to feed him the ball that Bubba Poole is a playmaker. He can make people miss. They need help on the perimeter, so they've made him a receiver, and he does a lot of that, and that has helped this Utah offense as well this year. The first first down of the night for the Utes, trailing 10-0 here in the first quarter. Poole in motion. Hand it off to Booker. And Booker gets wrapped up in the backfield. Tellus Jones brings him down. A loss of two on the play. And Booker has really been trying to get to the sideline. Look how his shoulders are pointed toward the sideline. And he can't get them turned toward the line of scrimmage before Tellus Jones gets at him and, and is able to really wrestle him with his upper body out of bounds. Booker is not an effective back. If he's headed toward the sideline, he's got to be pointed toward the line of scrimmage. Great job by the Cavs' D. Pressure coming. They swing it out to Booker. He's been a good receiver for them this year. And Booker pushes beyond midfield to 49. Gets seven yards back and third and three coming up. And one play later, we see the difference. He's able to square those shoulders, and he breaks three tackles on his way to making it a manageable third down situation. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons for Devontae Booker. But more importantly, maybe this year is what he has done helping Travis Wilson out of the backfield as an option, as a receiver. It's Booker again on the carry, and look at him go. You talk about beast mode or book mode. How about the explosiveness mode? You know, there's a difference between backs. Some guys like to tiptoe through the tulips, so to speak, when they get into that contact zone waiting for somebody to hit him, and, and some guys just change gears. And you can see Booker, he just changes gears, and that's when guys kind of slough off you like a snake skin in the desert when you're <laughs> trying to tackle you. First and 10 here for Utah. At the 37 of Arizona. They give it to Booker again, makes a couple of moves, was patient. And Booker is able to pick up three. Zani for Ma Maono with the tackle. Second down and seven coming up here for the Utes, trailing by ten. Utes out looking for an answer. Covey in motion. Wilson over the middle, completes the pass. A first down to his tight end, Harrison Hanley gets ten. And that's about a third string tight end. The tight ends for Utah have been a little beat up. But watch Wilson here, looking towards the flat, looking towards a swing route, and then coming off to the tight end. That's a mature, older quarterback, and you just can't teach that kind of stuff. That's why Utah's been so competitive this year, the experience they have at that quarterback position. And we have yet to see Travis Wilson tuck it and run. Booker. Up the middle again, we'll get two. 
see that clock running now, Justin, and this is exactly what, what Utah needed to do after Arizona started off so explosively. Just get your rhythm down, get the ball to Booker, get the ball to Covey, Bubba Pool, show your, your weapons, and get a couple first downs and get that clock going. They're down two scores, so no real sense of urgency here for the Utes, but still a much needed drive to eat some clock. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for Utah. Covey takes the handoff. Here's Covey. Look at that cut. Another first down. A true freshman. They've thrown to him once. Now they hand off to him as he picks up 10. Watch Covey come around here as he goes. And you're going to see him make the cut right there. And that is a brave cut. Most guys running this end around would take it all the way outside. But Covey read it beautifully. And he was fast enough to get by the pursuit. First and 10 from the 12 for Utah. That guy's 166 pounds, put his foot <laughs> in the ground. A lot of courage in that 166. Oh, yeah. Booker able to get forward to the seven. Second down and five coming up. Parker Zeller with his second tackle. And this is really a Utah drive, what we're accustomed to seeing from the Utes this year. This is their identity as a football team. You couldn't have two more different teams playing on the field tonight. You saw those numbers. Red zone defense for Arizona hasn't been pretty this year. Booker again. And Booker's going to be very close to that first down marker. Third down is going to come up. It's going to be third and short. Jeff Worthy, Paul McGlure combined for the stop. Paul McGlure, number 14. He was a defensive back this season. Had to move up to linebacker with all the injuries. Five injuries to the middle linebacker position for Arizona. Third and one here for the use. Booker gets the first down. He's short of the end zone. It's going to be first and goal. He may have bobbled the ball. Physical finish to the run for Booker to get the first down. He makes a little cutback to the backside A gap between the center and guard. And you just hear the ruling on the field is that he's down. There's the elbow down. There's the knee down. It's hard to tell where the ball came out. Arizona did recover. And now, let's see if we have a review. Ruling on the previous play is under review. Jake Matthews, number 47, is the one who made the hit against Devontae Booker. And let's take a look when the ball came loose, when the knee was down. Remember, he was ruled down. And that looks like he's down. That's a really great shot by our guys. And Matthews doing a great job of trying to strip and rip. Pretty close, but to me, the elbow's down. Let's bring in Mike Pereira from Los Angeles. Mike, what do you see on this? Guys, I'll tell you, it looks to us like the elbow's down. The two shots that we have before the ball comes out looks like the elbow hits. So I don't really see anything, Petros. I don't think anything that can to overturn this call. Throwing a party in the booth. Mike Pereira agrees <laughs> with me. Yeah, man, I've, I've, I've been waiting for a long time to get with you guys. <laughs> We've been waiting for you, Mike. We found out you're with us. We're excited. We're making it work late. The other aspect of this play, even if they did rule it a fumble, is there a clear recovery by, um, by Arizona? I'm not sure there even is of that. After reviewing the play, the ruling stands. First down. So everybody was right. Petros, Mike, we're all set. It's first and goal from the one. <laughs> Vindicated. This drive, 12 plays, 74 yards so far. Devontae Booker, 28 yards on the ground on seven carries. Travis Wilson, four for four through the air for 36 yards. And Booker is in. He's got 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. Phenomenal numbers for Utah. On first and goal, easily into the end zone is Devontae Booker.
Make it 17 for 17. The 11th rushing touchdown of the year for Devontae Booker. And Utah is able to answer the touchdown from Arizona. Great tough run by Booker. I mean, you saw that coming, and he got right up underneath that tight end, Ken Hamill. Hamill, excuse me. Phillips, the extra point is good. A long, sustained drive for the use. And it's punched in from one yard out from Booker. 10-7, Arizona leading. Very often in college football anymore. 13 plays, took almost six and a half minutes. And they punch it in for a touchdown. Well, you see them from teams that play really physical football. You know, in the Big 12, West Virginia, believe it or not, Oklahoma, uh, Utah does it, and Stanford does it, obviously. And it's really because of Booker and the physicality that Wilson has had running the ball. Both guys doing a great job of just kind of settling down that offense and getting a good drive going and eating some clock. Let's see how Arizona responds after standing on the sideline for a while. Andy Phillips will kick off. Terrell Johnson, Jonathan Hayden are back deep for Arizona. Johnson from the three. A running start for Terrell Johnson. And he takes it out to the 27-yard line. A look at the season recap for Arizona. Got off to a good start, 3-0 in non-conference play. Look at that. They climbed all the way up to number 16 in the AP poll. But then, September 26th, a new Solomon went down. Scooby Wright goes out. They suffer the loss. Kind of take a tailspin. They had a good game last week at USC. They could not hang on. You see they dropped three in a row, five of the last seven. Again, that's why this game is important. First down here for Arizona. Nick Wilson staying in there at tailback. And a flag. False start against Arizona. False start. Offense number 67. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So back it up five. First and 15 for Rich Rod's crew. Solomon, pressure. Solomon able to escape. A good move by Solomon. And a new Solomon picks up the first down, 11 yards. Solomon had somebody on a wheel route, really headed toward the end zone, but just couldn't get there with the pressure. And does a great job of just improvising. He's not the better runner between Randall and him, but doing a good job there. He's got quick feet. A 16-yard pickup as it was first and 15. And off to Wilson. And Wilson has the ankle grabbed by Jason Fanica. Second down and 10. Arizona's had a lot of success with Nick Wilson, especially last year, running the ball against this Utah team. Solomon plants the foot, throws downfield, and that is caught. Samaje Grant's able to bring it down. With Justin Thomas there on the coverage, Grant has it all the way down to the 17, a 45-yard play. Thomas almost got it out of there. Great strong hands by Grant securing the ball, and that ball came out fast. Solomon very sharp early in this game. Solomon, lobbing one, corner of the end zone, flag on the play, Caleb Jones. Looked to me like he caught it. Still no signal from the officials. Caleb Jones says it was a touchdown. The officials? If it's a catch, I think it's a touchdown. Brian Allen was there on the coverage.
There is no foul for offensive pass interference. The result of the play is a touchdown. Well, they thought they would get Jones on a push-off, but that was the flag. Jones with a push-off on Allen. He did extend that arm, but they picked the flag up, and a great throw and a great catch by Caleb Jones. What a start for this Arizona offense. A 17-yard touchdown pass from Solomon to Caleb Jones, following that 45-yard pass to Samaje Grant and Casey Scourin on for the extra point. Well, we talk so much about the vaunted defense of Utah. How about the offense for Arizona? 17 first quarter points leading by 10. Now for the Nissan Heisman watch and Petros, this is getting awfully interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's confusing. Here's what <laughs> I've got. Leonard Fournette, LSU, lost today, but he's big and he's strong. He looks like Herschel Walker. I'll probably drop him out of there next week. Christian McCaffrey has been great, but Stanford lost today, but an all-purpose yard maven. Derrick Henry, I'm giving him it after that game against LSU. And today as well. Yeah, and Corey Coleman, very, very strong receiver for Baylor, keeping that offense buoyed with their quarterback out. Joe Williams is still in at tailback here for Utah. Wilson, the pass is incomplete for Britton Covey. There was a thought maybe was that a lateral, so they had to dive on the ball. But it was an incomplete pass, a forward pass. But before that play, Utah was averaging about four and a half yards on first down, nine runs and three passes. And first down is a giant key for the Utes because they're not as explosive as most of the teams, frankly, offensively in the Pac-12. They need a little help. And they got Devontae Booker getting ready, warming up on the sideline, but Joe Williams still in there. Second down and 10. Wilson, pressure coming, flag on the play. The pass is complete to Harrison Hanley. Let's wait to see what the penalty is for. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number 68 and 74. A 15 yard penalty, second down. Yeah, this is Celesi. Uhatafe and JJ Dealman with the engagement and then the chop, you see it there. Pretty easy call, and that's why the flag came out. Big point of emphasis in college football. You just can't do that. It gets guys hurt. A big penalty right there and now backs up to second and 25. And there is Devontae Booker on the bike, trying to stay loose. Wilson comes near side, completes the pass to Kenneth Scott. Scott's out of bounds at the 26. Devontae Neal able to force him out. A six-yard pickup, third and long, very long, 19 yards. Expect a more conservative call here from the Utes offense to get a field goal would be my guess, but you never know. And a timeout will be taken by Arizona. Timeout. Third and 19 coming up here for Utah, down by 10. Devontae Booker, this during the timeout. The trainer's looking at him. Watch him give the point to the field. Get out there. <laughs> no better feeling than that. You're looking at a guy's ligaments in his knee, and you get the point to the field. That's, that's a good feeling. But it's still Joe Williams in there. On third and 19, they dump it off to Williams. Williams, a good run after the catch. Gets up to the 17-yard line. Tellus Jones, Paul McClure combined for the tackle, a nine-yard pickup. So like you said, conservative, didn't try to get it all back, just made the field goal attempt easier for Andy Phillips. And that was a good drive by the Utes. They, they ate up some clock. They kept Arizona's offense on the sideline and they're going to try to get some points out of it. Most importantly, give their defense a rest and a chance to figure out what Arizona's doing that's hurting them so badly. A 34-yard field goal attempt here for Andy Phillips. And that's a chip shot for Phillips. They put the points on the board. They make it a one-score game. 17-10. Arizona on top, 5.39 to go. On first down, Solomon pressured. Up the middle, and Solomon gets chased down from behind by Kylie Fitz. 
Nice play by Fitz catching up to him. We've not seen Gerard Randall in the game yet because Solomon has started out so sharp. We wonder if we'll see him this half. Quick pass to Johnson. Terrell Johnson able to fall forward. Jared Norris tripped him up. A pickup of four. So third and two now coming up here for the Wildcats. A rare appearance by a tight end. Number 17, Josh Kern in the game. Lined up at the wing here for Rich Rod. You don't see that a lot with Arizona. Nick Wilson has checked back in at tailback for Arizona on third and two. It's kept by Solomon. A new Solomon runs for the first down as he gets tripped up. And it looks like Solomon is getting up a bit gingerly. With that left knee, he got nine yards. Well, you see that tight end come across the formation, Kern, and really set the kick out block for a new Solomon, who did a good job of getting underneath him. And you could tell a new was concerned about that knee right away. Lotulelli was the one who tripped him up. On first down, Solomon goes for that back shoulder throw again for David Richards, but it's incomplete. We've seen that throw a lot so far in this game for a new Solomon. That's part of Arizona's offense. You know, everything they want to do, especially in the early downs, is get you out to the sideline. What they're trying to do is get the defense to turn their hips and really start running out there instinctively, and that creates vertical run lanes for the backs when they do the zone read. Solomon checks down to the sideline. Solomon with plenty of time. Throw and has a man wide open. Caught. Caleb Jones got behind Hatfield. And Caleb Jones with another big 46 yard reception. Caleb Jones just finding his way behind the defender. Corey Butler Bird. And that ball dropped in very nicely by a new Solomon. They can lull you to sleep, throwing it outside, and then a guy all of a sudden ends up behind you. First and 10 from the 12 here for Arizona. And it looks like Arizona will call its second timeout. Timeout. Arizona, their second of the half. Be 30 seconds in length. A new Solomon has thrown for 182 yards in this game. They've had a couple of big plays. That one right there, like you said, they kind of lull you to sleep. Throw out wide, and then they take the shot down the field, and they convert. Next Saturday, two guys that are looking to become contenders in the welterweight division face off as Neil Magny takes on Kevin Gastelum, highlighting a full card of great action that all begins at 7 Eastern right here on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Speaking of great action, Ronda Rousey is in, a, in action tonight. Those fights aren't that long, usually. <laughs> a little different from the Mayweather fight. <laughs> After the timeout, first and ten. Wilson in the backfield. They hand off to Wilson, and Wilson runs into three white jerseys. No gain. Lotulelli was there for a stop. Gianni Paul, haven't called his name very often. Gianni Paul, who leads this team in tackles, coming into this game with 84. Second down and 10 for Arizona. they got a lot of guys on that defense for the Utes with a lot of edge. Again, the handoff to Wilson. And Wilson tripped up at the four by Jason Fanica. An eight-yard pickup. And Wilson shaken up a little bit on the play, but look at that dashing vertical run. Gianni Paul gets cut off, and an ankle tackle is what saves the touchdown, and Wilson shaken up. And now Jared Baker comes back in on third and two. High snap! Solomon! He's going to dive on it, and he does. Let's see where they mark him down. He's going to be down at the ninth, excuse me, at the 24-yard line. That is a big-time mistake by the center. Came in bondage, the high snap over a new Solomon. And obviously, Rich Rod, pretty frustrated. 
This is very frustrating. Arizona with a great opportunity to score the down before with Nick Wilson, who just got clipped on the ankle. And that ball just unmanageable for Solomon. He does the right thing of getting on top of it. But Richrod, I've seen him beside himself a lot. And this is, this is about a, a 9 out of 10. It's a loss of 19 yards in a play, and he's beside himself again because last week at USC, they jump out to a big lead early. They can't hang on. They jump out to a big lead here. You've got a chance to add to that lead with maybe seven points, and now, after the Utah timeout to stop the clock, you're looking at a field goal attempt. Here for Casey Scouring, who converted earlier from 47, this time from 40. Trying to make it a 10-point game once again. And Scourin's kick is good. So he's two for two. They still get points. But as we talked about early, it's not the seven points that they're looking for. No, they need to convert, especially against a very good defense like this. And they've had problems all year with bad snaps in the center. Came in Bundage, who they absolutely love. But this is not a new thing for the Arizona offense, and this is why you see the frustration on the Cat sideline from their head coach. Just a lot of high snaps, very difficult to run a rhythm pace offense when the quarterback's not sure where that ball's going to be, and tonight cost him dearly. A 19-yard loss on that play. 20-10, to 10, Arizona leading Utah. Rich Rodriguez still hot on the sideline because a win tonight and they're bowl eligible for the fourth straight year. A win tonight, they'll make it four in a row against Utah. And a win tonight would be four straight years with wins over a top 10 team. Covey thought about taking it out of the end zone. Instead, he'll take a knee. Thought about it twice. <laughs> well, stay tuned for the State Farm FS1 college football show that's coming up at the half. Of course, the Pac-12 showdown, Stanford against Oregon. An upset there in the Big 12. What a comeback by Oklahoma State today on the road at Iowa State. I thought I thought they had him in Ames. It Man. looked like it. And Michigan scoring on the final play of the game to force overtime. And they win it in double overtime. And look at Rich right on the sideline. It's essentially like an unforced turnover. Joe Williams in the backfield here. Wilson, pump fake, taking the shot down the sideline. And that is incomplete for Kenneth Scott. But you see Utah still trying just to create some kind of explosive plays on the offense on first down. They're, they're trying to get Kenneth Scott down the field, trying to get Britton Covey out in some space, and they've had some trouble doing so. But that really is the next step for Kyle Whittingham's team. They kind of have everything but that. Second and 10 here for Utah. Wilson swings it out to Covey. Covey, look at him go down the sideline. Britton Covey. What a run by the freshman. Will Parks finally brings him down a 46-yard play for Britton Covey. Watch him run away from Jamar Allah, who is a pretty fast player. This is just pure speed. He's able to relax his body and really get faster as the play goes along and a nice cut to elongate it. They needed to get Covey in space, and they did. And look who's coming back in, Devontae Booker for Utah. Wilson, he's going to change the play. Coming up on a minute and 30 to go. The play clock about to expire, and Utah will call its second timeout of the half. A big 46-yard play. Utah's in business down by 10. Yes. First and 10 after the timeout and the big 46-yard completion of Britton Covey. Booker, flea flicker, Wilson to the end zone, Scott, a lot of contact, a couple of flags, we'll have to wait and see who's it on. I think it's on Scott, I, I think Kenneth Scott threw Will Parks down in the double coverage, 
and then tried to get the one hand on the ball. Fast interference. Defense All number right. 11. A 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. They called Will Parks. There he is. You see him put both arms around Will Parks and sling him down, but Will Parks' head didn't come around. It did a little bit, but then it came back the other way, and when that happens, usually the flag is on the defense, but I mean, to me, this is a no call because that could have very well have been against Scott also. So now it's first down from the 14-yard line. A lot of movement here. Empty backfield now. Wilson pressured up the middle. Wilson's going to run. And Travis Wilson with that big 6-7 frame gets taken down by Luca Bruno after a pickup of six. Just one timeout remaining for both Utah and Arizona here in this first half. Utah with the big play to Britton Covey and then catching a bit of a break on that pass interference call. Still has plenty of time to get this working and Jeff Castile knows they have a timeout left. Covey in motion. Wilson. To the end zone, flag again is thrown. Kenneth Scott, the intended receiver. Devontae Neal there on the coverage. It looked like Neal threw Scott to the ground. Pass interference, defense number 19. I roll the ball and place at the two yard line. An automatic first down. Another break by Utah, because I'm not sure how catchable that ball was. Clearly pass interference with the hand on the jersey. Good call. But an unnecessary play by Neal because that ball was not going anywhere. Devontae Neal, the transfer out of Notre Dame, used to be a wide receiver, now a defensive back. First and goal from the two. Wilson to Scott again. Did he come down with it? Touchdown! Kenneth Scott against Devontae Neal again. I like the play call. You frustrate a guy with a pass interference call, and then you go right back after him with the same play and the threat of Devontae Booker in the backfield. Very physical, both guys. And a great job by Scott stretching out that long 6-3 frame and coming down with the ball and the one foot in bounds. Andy Phillips now on for the extra point. It is a three-point game here in the desert. And again, remember, that high snap, 19 yards. They lost in the play. They could only put three on the board. And now Arizona gives up a touchdown to Kenneth Scott. 23 yards on penalties on that drive. The big play, 46 yards for Britton Covey. It was basically all Covey run after the catch. And if you're thinking along the lines of Arizona, you're thinking like Yogi Barrett's deja vu all over again. Yeah, they, well, you knew that the Utah was going to come back and fight him in, in this game. You know, you knew that Utah's defense was going to be tough. And I, I think we're in for a fight for four quarters here because Arizona is playing on all cylinders offensively and defensively. They're showing great effort. You wonder if they're going to tire out because their defense has been so decimated. And Utah, they're just working their stuff. And playing the conservative game that they're used to playing. If I had kickers like Utah and a defense like that, I'd do the same thing. Third receiving touchdown of the year for Kenneth Scott. Andy Phillips kicking off low. And this will go out of the end zone for a touchback. Stay tuned. The State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show is coming up in just moments. Three-point lead for Arizona over number 10, Utah. But Utah's offense, which we've seen them take time off the clock. This last drive, they knew they had to go fast. The big play for Covey, and they're able to convert it into seven. And they got Devontae Booker back on the field, but he did not get a carry. Was that a situational thing, or was he just a decoy out there? They ran the fleet flicker with him. Jared Baker on the carry, and Baker gets up to the 30, picks up five. Jay and Dan standing by in L.A. for the halftime show. 
Baker again. Bouncing around. Picks up two. And let's see if that'll be the final play of the half. I think, think Rich Rod's still mad about the snap. I think he is. That is the final play of this first half. A fun, exciting first half here in Tucson. Lots of offense. 20 to 17, Arizona leading number 10, Utah. Coming up after the short break, we'll get you to Jay and Dan in LA for highlights. A really fun first half of football here in Tucson, Arizona. Leads number 10, Utah by 3, 20 to 17. Justin Kutcher alongside Petros Papadakis. And Petros, we came in talking about Arizona. And you'd mentioned their quarterback, Anu Solomon. He got off to a great start for the Wildcats. Oh, he was very sharp. And the Wildcats offense looked like Rich Rod's offense early. He ran the ball well, very good with his feet. And he was very accurate, knowing exactly where he wanted to throw the ball, getting it out fast, very accurately down the field. And that really got this huge defense on their heels early in the game. On the other side for Utah, Devontae Booker. You said book mode like peace mode. They gave him the ball a lot, and he did well, but then a slight injury. Yeah, well, he did not disappoint. I mean, he was just as nasty and mean and physical and great with his upper body as I expected him to be. However, on a, on a first down little flip route, he hurt his knee and went to the sideline. Now, this is where he got hurt. He did come back into the game, but has yet to have a carry. He picked up a flea flicker and got it back to Travis Wilson, but he hasn't carried the ball since they checked out his knee, but he has appeared in the game. A look at the first half stats. Arizona has the edge in passing yards. First down, just about even. Really a good first half for both these teams. Utah will receive Casey Scourin to kick off. Britton Covey, Bubba Poole awaiting this one. It is a line drive. Covey makes the play at the two. And Covey gets to the sideline. Britton Covey is run out by the kicker, Casey Scourin, all the way at the 38-yard line. A 36-yard return for the exciting Britton Covey. And you said it, exciting. You know, they have not had an exciting player here at Utah in a long time out in the perimeter. I mean, Drez Anderson, Flipper Anderson's son, was pretty good for Kyle Whittingham. But nobody has been as quick and as exciting so early in his career as Britton Covey. And you got Devontae Booker back in the game at the tailback position. On first down here for Utah. Down by three. They give it to Booker. And Booker skips ahead to the 41 to get three. And he looks pretty good. You know, it's hard when you get hurt, even if it's not a significant injury. If it's something to your knee and you're an athlete, you get afraid. And you get scared that something bad happened. And sometimes that can really hinder you for the rest of the game because that moment of fear that, that you know, the day might be over and worse. So Booker doing a good job coming back and getting a feel for the game. Covey in motion. A slant to the tight ends. Look at Hanley go. Hanley to the end zone. Touchdown. 59 yards. Harrison Hanley with his fourth touchdown of the season. He gets right by Tellus Jones and really into the open field. Everybody peeking in the backfield and Hanley shows behind him and if Utah's going to be able to make big plays like this especially to their tight end they're going to be awful hard to beat they're not an offense that looks explosive often and when they get big plays you might have a game like Oregon Utah the extra point is good the first lead of the game for the Utes they're now up by four over Arizona Tucson that didn't take very long. Two plays, 62 yards. And Harrison Hanley with a 59-yard touchdown catch to give Utah its first lead of the game. 
And you think back to that high snap and how angry Rich Rodriguez was on the sideline, realizing points came off the board essentially for Arizona. And now Utah back-to-back -to -back touchdown to take the lead. Andy Phillips to kick off. There's Gerard Randall getting warmed up. We saw a new Solomon bang his knee a little bit earlier in the game. Wonder if we'll see Randall at all. Terrell Johnson from the two. And Johnson gets across the 20, up to the 22. Huddle up with college football experts in live web chats all season long. A new guest every week, the Edward Jones College Football Huddle on FoxSports.com. Justin Kutcher, Petros Papadakis here in Tucson. Mike Pereira back in L.A. And let's see what happens now for Arizona. See, their offense was very good in that first half behind a new Solomon. Now they have some catching up to do. And they know exactly what it is they do. It's just a matter of getting the rhythm going and, and keeping Nick Wilson on the field and, and making him a physical part of this offense because without Nick Wilson, they really don't take a lot of football out of you play in and play out. Wilson is in at tailback on first down. It's kept by Solomon on the zone read. Not much room to go. A nice job by Jared Norris reading that one. Second down in nine. Wilson splits out wide. Solomon escapes some pressure. Solomon has the first down. He lowers that shoulder as he gets hit by Booby Hobbs, a pickup of 11. Now, Randall is the guy that people talk about as far as running the ball, but I've always been pretty impressed with the new Solomon running the ball. He's got a good base. He's got good feet. You see him step out of the tackle there with the high step and then finish it physically. Play action. Solomon to the sideline, completes the pass to Samaj Grant, slips a tackle, able to stay on his feet, and Samaj Grant has himself a first down as he gets 13. This is the kind of stuff you have to have in this offense. You know, you create energy, you create plays, and you let your athletes go out and play. Grant uses the old hand tap drill, getting his arm down, but not all the way down, and, and kind of doing a breakdance move to get the first down. And you, of course, were a great breakdancer back in your day. In my time. Yeah. Solomon, look at him escape, rolling out to his left, buying himself some time. And Solomon, they're going to draw a flag. David Richards went down. Solomon, he also went down. Oh, he got hit. A new Solomon took a big hit, and so did Richards before the ball he even got near him. You're going to see a new setting up the throw, and he knows he's going down. Defense, number 20, 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. It's Fanica who got the hit on a new Solomon. That's a tough kid. The penalty leads to a first down. It's first and 10 at the 38 of Utah. The Wildcats trying to answer this touchdown by the Utes. Play action. Slant. Caught. Nate Phillips for 14 yards. You know, this is the way Arizona's offense comes out. You know, usually hard and fast, and they cause you troubles. Phillips doing a good job of just being quick, making the catch, and finding his way up the field. It's not that complex what they do, but with the pace in which they do it and the athletes in which they spread the field and where the hash marks are in college football, they do a great job of creating space. On first down, it's Wilson on the carry. Oh. Wilson will get a yard. I know it doesn't seem like much, but just Nick Wilson's presence out there helps this entire offense. It just gives them a different dimension, and I'm sure it makes everybody, including the offensive line guys, more confident. Solomon, look at him escape again. Gets up to the 20. Stevie Tuikoabutu brings him down. However, you just see him in the pocket the sense that he has to avoid the pressure and pick up some positive yards. And yeah, that's a big tree of a guy, 6'1", 320 pounds. 
that he got up under. But a big third down situation now for the Cats. Empty backfield on third and six. Solomon. Trying to stiff arm, gets away. Throws to the end zone. Is it picked off? Intercepted. Brian Allen in the end zone. Warning on the field is interception and touchback. First down, Utah. Well, there's one thing to being ultra elusive and making big plays. There's another thing, and it's a very fine line between doing that and doing too much. That's Tui Kolovatu, who almost brings him down by the shoulder pad, and Solomon, still trying to make something happen, sees the open man in the end zone, but just can't get it over the head. A turnover in the end zone. Interception by Brian Allen. Utah with the ball, leading by four. We come back. Said on, you can see his head is down a bit. The interception in the end zone by Brian Allen. Nice play, too. And now Utah takes over at the 20. Hand off to Booker. Devontae Booker behind the blocker. A good, patient run by Booker. Gets run out by Dellis Jones. He gets 12. And that'll make him a little bit more confident in that leg going forward here in the second half. We talked in the open about how he gets better and better throughout the game, and the fourth quarter is really his time to shine. And that'll give him some confidence, getting out into the perimeter behind some blockers and having a nice physical run. Booker, 324 fourth quarter yards on the season. That's good for fourth in the nation. It's Booker again, cutting it back, diving forward, up to the 36. Jake Matthews with his fifth tackle, a pickup of four. And that's what's impressive about a guy like Devontae Booker. Not much there, but with that cutback, with that lunge, the dive forward, he's able to get four yards on first down. You have to earn it, and that's kind of the way this Utah team is. You know, you've seen Arizona drive down and get into the red zone, but they haven't been able to convert with touchdowns because they haven't been able to earn those touchdowns. Utah's a team that, whether they're good or bad or a six-win team or not, they make you earn it. Out to Bubba Poole in space. And Poole is very close to that first down marker, tackled by Jamar Allah. A five-yard pickup, third and one. Three for five on third downs are the Utes. Booker stopped initially, kept those legs moving, and because of that, he gets the first down. And this is what Utah does, right? They pick up first downs, they take time off the clock, they keep the offense on the field, and more importantly, keep the opposition's offense off it. And it's not enough just to stand Booker up at the line of scrimmage. Your job's not done. You've got to get him all the way. It's like smashing a cockroach. You've got to get him <laughs> all the way down to the ground. And Fui Maono couldn't do it that time. He got the first. 18 carries, 84 yards for Booker. Kept here by Wilson on the zone read. And Wilson looks like he's got 10 yards for the first down. Let's see, do they move the chains or is it nine and a half? It's going to be nine and a half yards. Second down and short with Tellus Jones making the tackle yet again is sixth. I mean, he's so tall. He started his fall about five yards <laughs> down the field. And, and then when, when the time the fall's over, he's almost got a first down. I mean, that's a sequoia tree running through the line. <laughs> Second in less than one. They can take a shot here. Wilson scrambling. Wilson is going to run for the first down and get out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Will Parks able to chase him out. But a good heads-up play. Wilson on second and one thinking, hey, I can take a shot down the field, not forcing it, and picks up first down. Well, watch this Arizona defense. They really have had a hard time because they've had the tight end make a big play against them. Britton Covey, they have to worry about Booker, who's unaccounted for. Wilson, who's had some good runs in the last couple downs.
It's Wilson again. And there he is, the Sequoia tree, falling forward for three. Fui Maono with the tackle. Second down and seven. And this is what plagued that Arizona defense against Washington up in Seattle and, and against USC in the second half. Uh, giving up big plays and just having a hard time finishing the game. And, and it's understandable. I mean, they're without the, the best defensive player, in my opinion, in all of football, Scooby Wright, and a lot of other guys just trying to fill in the hole. Again, it's Wilson keeping it. And Wilson will pick up the first down to the 28. Jarvis McCall and Hayden Gregory combined for the tackle, a nine-yard run by Wilson. Just keeping the ball on the ground, keeping it in his hands. The power offense of Utah behind the offensive line. All the guys around 300 to 315 pounds. Experience. Hand off to Booker. Booker will get a yard. McCall with the tackle. And it's got to be really frustrating for this Wildcats team as a whole with the way they like to play and the speed in which they play, the way they practice, which is all about speed and, and getting on and off the field quickly, having to play against this giant lumbering heavyweight boxer of sorts, just throwing haymaker after haymaker to their decimated defense. It, it's, a, it's a tall order here in the second half to stop these guys. Second and nine. Running right the option, the pitch to Booker, hits the hole, spins, and again, he's real close to that first down marker. Tellus Jones has had an active night, seven tackles now for him. And if you stop Booker and he only gets a one-yard run, they find a way to get him out to the perimeter. You see the big physical block by the tight end, Handley. Booker just comes right off his behind and gets positive yards. Third and one. And the defense come up with a stop. Booker, they do. They stop him in the backfield, a loss of one. Reggie Gilbert, one of the leaders on this team, a fifth-year senior, makes the play. And Reggie Gilbert's one of those guys that, despite this defense being beat up, has given great effort all season long. One and a half sacks this year, a few TFLs, did a great job of getting on the back of Booker when his shoulders were pointed toward the sideline. 37-yard field goal attempt here for Andy Phillips, connected from 34 before. And Phillips drills it. But that is a small victory right there for the Arizona defense, giving up just three, not a touchdown, and that means it's a one-touchdown game. 27-20, Utah on top of Arizona. Tucson, seven-point lead for Utah over Arizona. Andy Phillips, two for two on the night. From field goals, officially a 38-yard field goal for Phillips. But look at that drive again. Nearly six minutes off the clock. However, it's just three and not seven for Utah. That, that's part of their ability. You know, they're, they're able to keep the ball for six minutes and they have great kickers and they're, they're not afraid to use them. Everybody plays for the other phase, special teams, defense and offense. It's a really balanced football team and impressive in that way. A high kick, Terrell Johnson from the four. Johnson across the 25, gets up the 28 yard line. For Arizona, this game has been in their grasp. A couple of miscues though. The high snap when they were within a few yards. Lost 19, had to settle for a field goal. Rich Rodriguez not happy. Then this on the last drive after Solomon escapes, throws an interception in the end zone. That leads to three more points. Yeah, the high snap started the simmer, and then the pick really started Rich Rod boiling. And they'd be very much in this game, and they still are, but probably with the lead if they were able to convert those two. Solomon throws this towards the sideline. The catch is made by Caleb Jones. Jones crossing the field. He's got some blockers. Jones spun around down to the 22-yard line. A 50-yard play. Gianni Paul chased him down. 
and this is not supposed to happen. That very impressive to have a guy make a catch at 6-3. First of all, a double move, and then he's all alone out there, finds the ball, and at 6-3 over 200 to make it all the way back across that field. The last move on the nickel, Justin Thomas, the most impressive. That's a great play individually by Caleb Jones. Jared Baker in. Play action. Zipped in. Caught by Johnny Jackson for 16 yards. A great story as Johnny Jackson started the season as a third-team safety in camp. Rich Rod said, hey, with all the injuries, if you go to offense, you'll be second team. He said, all right, coach, I'll go to offense. Solomon fired it in there. Arizona looking good on offense on this drive. First and goal from the six. Solomon keeps it. Solomon, touchdown! And just like that, Arizona responds. And you're going to see Evan Edgemont just be outrun by Solomon after a good fake to the end zone. We talked earlier in the game about the foot speed of Utah and how that was a slight advantage for this Arizona offense. It came to fruition there. Scourin's extra point is good. Three plays, 50 yards, 16 yards, and a six-yard run by Solomon. His second rushing touchdown of the year. And guess what? Rich Rod, he's now happy. So join us at moteam.co slash fox dash sports to learn more about how we are getting involved in the Movember movement. All tied up here in the third quarter, 4-1 to go. Number 10 Utah against Arizona. A new Solomon with a six-yard touchdown run. And nice hair. I, I believe we were told he should be in a head and shoulders commercial. Britton Covey drops the kickoff and he'll take a knee. Time for Carl's Jr. and Hardy's game break. Let's go out to L.A. and check in with Jenny. Thanks, Justin. Number 19, UCLA hosting Washington State. Cougars QB Luke Folk injured on the drive, so his backup Peyton Bender in to finish it off. He connects with Dom Williams. Seven-yard touchdown. The Cougars take the 14-13 lead over the Bruins as the second quarter winds down. Justin Petros, back to you guys. Thanks, Jenny. And that's obviously important because this Utah team, they play against UCLA at home next week. They both control their own destiny in the south. On first down, it's Devontae Booker. And Booker gets two, second down and eight. I mean, we really just saw the, the personalities of these teams splayed out on both the last offensive drives. Utah with a six-minute drive. They get their kicker to finish it off. Arizona goes down in like five seconds and it scores a <laughs> touchdown. That really, it really shows the contrast between the philosophies of these two head coaches. There's the hair of Solomon. Man. Second down and eight. Wilson slings it out wide. It's caught by Tyrone Smith. But he gets thrown down essentially right away, gets two yards. Devontae Neal with the tackle. This is a huge down now for the Utes. They, they can't afford to let their defense get back on the field after getting shredded on that last drive. They, they've got to hold the ball. That's part of the responsibility of this offense. They're making some noise here at Arizona Stadium. Bubba Poole, Devontae Booker in the backfield. Poole goes in motion. Pressure coming. Wilson, he goes down. Set. Paul McGlure, a loss of four on the set. Now, we talked about how they really miss Scooby Wright rushing the passer, but they moved number one, Tellus Jones, into that banded position. There he is on the edge, and he's the one that forces Wilson to step up and cause the problems for Utah's offense on this play. You see him flash behind, and that causes Wilson to have to pull that ball down. A great timed blitz by, by Castillo. Just the second punt of the night for Hackett. And the fair catch is made by Nate Phillips. A 40-yard punt. The notorious Conor McGregor. He has taken over this season on the Ultimate Fighter. Let's find out what he has to say. 
They call me an instigator. What the? A troublemaker. A wild card and a rebel. Down to your back like a... So don't miss an all-new Ultima Fire Wednesdays only on FS1. Petros, I think he's talking about you. I was told if I got a neck tattoo on my Adam's apple that Fox <laughs> wasn't going to put me on TV anyway. And yet they have this guy. <laughs> Arizona with the ball at the 35. Justin Kutcher, Petros Papadakis here in Tucson. Mike Pereira back in L.A. Jared Baker in at tailback for Arizona. The offense back on the field in a hurry. It's the handoff to Baker. Trying to get out wide. He could not tackle by Jared Norris at the line. And this is where Utah's defense has to earn their money. They've been put in a tough situation offensively. They've got to get this, find a way to get these cats off the field in a hurry. Second and ten. Solomon pressure coming up the middle. Able to get it out wide to Terrell Johnson. And he's going to lose a few yards on this one. A really loss of two. Well defended there, Justin. You see Norris and a new Solomon having a little bit of fun talking back and forth with each other. But really well defended by the Utes on that play. A nice call by Coach Peace, their defensive coordinator. Big pressure on Solomon. He gets it out to the perimeter on the hot route, but there was nowhere to go. So now they're looking at a third and 12. Utah trying to force the three and out. Solomon stepping up, taking a shot down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Intended for David Richards. If he puts more air under that ball, maybe they've got the big completion. David Richards, we talked about a little bit earlier, having a really good senior year, favorable matchup there. And he was open down the field. You're absolutely right, Justin. Just a little bit of air under that ball. And he might be going to the house. Hatfield was beaten. First punts of the game for Drew Riggleman. A low line drive punts away from Britton Covey. And it's going to be marked out at the 21, a 46-yard punt by Riggleman. Travis Wilson, we talked about him coming in, the four-year starter at quarterback for Utah. The big kid, he's starting to do it more with his legs in this third quarter. And he's used a lot of different targets. He's had Bubba Poole involved. He's got the tight ends involved. This big play by Britton Covey was huge for the Utes in the first half. And like you said, he's been a physical runner with the ball as well. That was a nice throw to Scott. He's had a pretty good night so far and been very efficient with the football when he's had the opportunity. He's got to get Booker back involved in the game so they can balance out their offense in the second half. Well, maybe giving Booker a bit of a breather as Joe Williams is in. He gets the pass on first down. And Williams takes a shot as he goes down to 25, gets four, Jamar Alon with the tackle. And I thought Williams was very serviceable in, in the second quarter when he came in and Booker went out. You know, when your best player goes out on the sideline and they're looking at his knee ligaments, yeah. uh, it can be frightening for an entire team. And sometimes that backup can be overwhelmed by the responsibility. But I thought Williams did a great job of a, protecting the ball, putting his head down, and getting positive yardage. Booker looks okay there. I think they're just giving him a breather, like you said. Second down and six. Williams goes in motion. Pressure coming, and this is thrown away by Travis Wilson. Third and six coming up, 11 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Well, we knew it was going to be a fight for Utah because they've had their struggles against Arizona the last three years. Think about last year. Utah was ranked number 20. They had a home game, and Arizona came in and just waxed them 42 to 10. They come in here, ranked number 10 in the country. It's a tie game with 11 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Third and six, pressure coming. Wilson gets rid of it, and it's caught by Kenneth Scott. And Scott gets the first down up to the 35-yard line, gets nine. Jarvis McCall finally bringing him down. Well, this is the kind of play that will make a difference in the game. Big rush coming. Tell us Jones and others. And Wilson's got to stand in there tall and deliver the it. Time out. That is the final play of the third quarter. So if you're a Pac-12 fan and you're thinking, what are the chances a Pac-12 team can go to the college football playoff? It's riding on Utah right now after Stanford's loss earlier. The Utes are in a battle with Arizona tied at 27 after three. Hey, 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 hey,
Kyle Whittingham said he's got one-third Polynesians, one-third Caucasians, one-third African-Americans. He says this team is diverse and so close. You see it there as they get set for this fourth quarter. And a good run by Joe Williams. And that's part of the balance. You know, Utah's got a lot of balance. They have a, a racial balance. They have age balance. You know, they have a lot of older guys that have been on uh, missions and come back. They have a lot of guys that are married with kids. So we talked about Devontae Booker's story. I mean, they have a lot of different guys. And the balance spills out onto the field between the special teams, the offense, and the defense. Can't say enough about what Kyle Whittingham has created in Salt Lake City with this program. Second down and one. Williams. Trying to get outside, a flag is thrown. He has the first down, but let's see what this flag is for. Well, whenever you see a guy in that much space who bubbles out one of those runs and takes it to the outside, somebody might have gotten pinned with a hold. Holding, offense number 70, 10-yard penalty, second down. That's against Jackson Barton again. So that negates the 13-yard run by Joe Williams. So now it's second down and 11. And they're letting Joe Williams finish this series. He started it in the third quarter, and he, he looks like he's going to finish it in the fourth. The officials come in, because right now it's looking at second down and seven. We have second down and 11 on our scoreboard. The game is stopped to confirm the penalty enforcement. It is second down. Nice explanation. Well, it's going to be second down and seven here for Utah. Wilson throws behind Joe Williams, third and seven coming up. And this is the third, third and relatively manageable in a row that Utah's faced that I can remember this half. Arizona's defense has done a much better job other than giving up the big play to the tight end. Of kind of keeping the Utes in front of them and tackling well. And again, Arizona undermanned. Have to limit their practice time because they don't have a lot of enough players trying to keep guys healthy. Empty backfield here on third and seven for Utah. Wilson, he's going to be sacked. There is a flag down. It may be an offsides against Tellis Jones, who tried to time the snap count. Well, he's been very active blitzing here in the second half, and the Utes haven't had much of an answer. Absolutely right, Justin. Tell us Jones, number one right there. Just a little early, and they caught him in the neutral zone. Still would have been a sack. <laughs> Used to be Mike Stoops on the sideline. We would laugh at it, how bad he got at Arizona. Now it's Rich Rod. Third and two. Williams up the middle, trying to lunge forward with the stretch. He is going to have the first down. A good effort by the backup running back, Joe Williams. And Williams really picking up where, where Booker has left off. We talked about these Utah backs making you earn it, making you take them all the way to the ground. And he does a good job of stretching out and finishing that play on top of DeAndre Miller's body. Five carries, 33 yards, running the option here, takes the pitch. Williams gets tripped up. A nice play by Jamar Allah. Pick up a four, could have been a lot more if not for the play by Allah. And you got to say, this Arizona defense, even though they've been hurt all year, pretty fast. They get out to the sideline, and Utah's been running that option with some effectiveness. And a nice job by Allah just to get there at the last moment, because Williams showed a good burst once he got that ball. 37 yards on the ground for Joe Williams on the night. He had 48 total coming into this game. Wilson with time over the middle. Incomplete. Raylan Singleton, the intended receiver. Jarvis McCall on the coverage. 
third and six coming up. Pretty risky throw. It's a good thing Wilson really got it out there because safety was coming over and the call was not in bad position either. Third down again for Utah. 12 21 to go here in the fourth quarter. Six of ten on third down are the Utes so far tonight. Wilson throws, and he completes the pass to Kenneth Scott. A flag comes in. Scott has the first down. Let's see what this flag is for. Devontae Neal with the tackle. Pass interference. Offense number 88. Whoa. Third down. Harrison Hanley, the tight end who had that big touchdown. He was the one called for pass interference going, who, me? There he is right here. Let's see what he does. And that's a that's a pretty clear pick play. You see him there with the left forearm a couple times, giving Parks the business. Wilson unhappy about it because he knows he delivered a pretty good strike there, and that was a huge down for the youth. And that's a huge penalty. Look at this. Utah penalized 105 yards. And now with the ball backed up at the 35, they have to get to the 45 of Arizona. The officials blow the whistle. The clock will start in the snap. Third and 21. Trying to get control of the game clock here. Well, it's really not working because I said the clock will start on the snap and the clock has been running. And they didn't snap it. Still confusion as they're jumping up and down here at Arizona Stadium. Jerseys were all over there. Jack Banda with a tackle. Remember that pick play, the offensive pass interference that gave the first down. Tom Hackett on to punts. Hackett. Gets off a good one. Maybe too good. Into the end zone. All tied up at 27. Arizona looking for the upset here at home against number 10, Utah. Memory looks like this. Arizona doing what they do. They score quickly through their five drives under two minutes. Utah scored 17 unanswered to take a lead. A new Solomon has had a very, very good game. And that bottom note, Arizona, for some reason, has had great success at home oh, yeah, against yeah. top 10 teams. I remember some big ones. Jared Baker is still in at tailback for Arizona. All tied up at 27. On first down, it is Baker. And he gets tripped up for a loss of one. Jason Fanica with a tackle for a loss. Remember we talked earlier in the game about this Utah front. They go about two deep with their front seven. There's not a lot of teams in this conference or any other that have that luxury. Let's see how fresh they are here in the fourth. That was a nice start. Second and 11. Solomon. Solomon's going to run with it. He slides, takes a hit, a big hit. 
No flag. Jason Fanica with the hit. You're going to see Solomon with the pump fake, and he's been very nifty with his legs. Starts to slide a little late, and a big hit by Panike, and that's a big guy. 6'3", 270. Nice pursuit, and Solomon's trying to shake it off. Third and two. The crowd here doesn't like there is no flag on the play. Seems like he hit him in his body area, yeah. though, not in the head. It's a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder hit there, even though the head did slam against the ground, and I could attest to that. Nobody hits harder out there than the ground. And now a timeout taken by Arizona, the first timeout of the half. Arizona. Mitch Rodriguez parking at the official. Twenty-seven all. This is the play that has left Arizona upset. You make the call. Oh, that leaves a mark. From Jason Fanica, let's bring in Mike Pereira. Mike, what did you see on this hit? I think I see a tough shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder hit. You know, the head snaps and hits the turf, but again, I don't think it's legal. The head's in. I don't think it's illegal. The head's in front. Second big hit we just saw. This one and Ronda Rousey just got knocked out Whoa. in the second round of the big UFC fight. So she's Ooh. lost her championship. Huge news. Mike Pereira breaking some stories here. And with Gerard Randall in at quarterback, a handoff to Jared Baker, and Baker will pick up the first down. This will be very interesting. We were told Gerard Randall was going to play a lot more in this game. This is his first appearance. And remember, it was a concussion in the game against UCLA that really could have derailed this Arizona offense. Randall went in and ran the ball well, but without a new Solomon, they missed that passing dimension. And it looks like a false start here against Arizona. These guys have been used to the other cadence for four quarters. This is a really hard thing for Randall to do, to come in and you see Solomon talking to the doctors. This is a tough kid, and he's just trying to shake it off. Like I said, and like Mike said, when that ground hits you, it, it's really hard because there's no give in the ground. First and 15 here for Arizona. Baker up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles. And Jared Baker with a big-time run gets the first down. Marcus Williams brings him down, but a run of 18 yards by Baker. Well, you don't want to do this with Jared Baker. He makes a nice move away from Lotulele early, and once he gets going, this is a really fast player, a bit stilted, but you do not want him running free. He can expose you. Chips by Randall, and Randall gets wrapped up in the backfield. Devin Carter with a tackle in the backfield, a loss of three. And we were talking about it a little bit, Justin. For Randall, who's been on the sideline, it's, it's not a warm night. I wouldn't say it's a cold night either, but basically just standing there the whole time, warmed up a couple times when Solomon got banged up, but nothing significant, and now he's got to come and run the show. In a tie game, looking for the upset. Randall, his first pass down the field! And it's picked off! Justin Thomas with the interception! Well, at first, it, it looked like Randall had a completion on his hands. It's right there in the slot. It's Nate Phillips who has a lot of steps on Thomas, but he's able to wow. make it up with some speed and just make a great play on the ball a little bit behind Phillips at the end there. That is a fantastic catch by Justin Thomas, his third interception of the season. And they made Randall pay for it on the other end, too. Fanica, who delivered the blow on Solomon, gets one on the other quarterback as well. Utah's defense coming through. On first down, it's Booker. Booker with the cutback. We'll get three, second and seven. The second takeaway by Arizona, excuse me, by Utah on the night. Justin Thomas, one of a couple guys out of Texas, kid out of Texas playing in this Utah secondary. This is fourth quarter now, so th this means it's Booker time. He's in. He's been rested and spelled. Second and seven. 
Booker looking for some room. He'll get four. And as you look at the clock, about seven minutes to go. Utah has had three scoring drives of about six minutes apiece. They can put one of those together. That might be the key to victory here in this fourth quarter. Ideally, that's what they're looking at. They, they have their bell cow runner in the game, and Britton Covey's been healthy and explosive. He's in the slot there, and it starts on this giant third down. Third and three, 14th career, 100-yard game for Devontae Booker. Booker on third and three, up the middle, will die for the first down. And that's the hardest guy to tackle, a guy that knows exactly where the stick is, gets his legs going, and leans so far forward that if nobody hits him, he's probably going to fall down. But you literally would have to get like two feet off the ground to get underneath him and make a tackle. That is just a special short yardage run by Devontae Booker. First and 10 from the 29. Booker trying to get the corner. A good job by Arizona's defense, straining them out. Gives up just three yards. Jamar Allah with another tackle. That's number eight on the night. Wildcats have done a really good job when Booker tries to get out to the sideline of running him down. Will Parks and company getting after him. Defensive coordinator Jeff Castile. Giving the instructions to his unit. Second down and seven. Wilson throws. Covey gets the first down again. Man, that kid is fun to watch. Ten-yard pickup for Britton Covey. Jarvis McCall, Jamar Alon combined the tackle. And you mentioned it earlier in the game, Justin, just the significance of this game in the Pac-12 and, and what Utah is trying to accomplish. This may be the most important drive of the year for the Utes. Stanford lost earlier tonight against Oregon. Utah ranked number 10. There have been losses in the top 10 today. The option, Booker. Booker fumbles the ball. Arizona recovers. Zellers recovers the fumble. Devontae Booker had the good run. Took a hit. Jeff Worthy forced the fumble. Arizona ball and tie game when we come back. Hey, Jewelers. Well, we mentioned this before. Teams in the top ten having lost today. Baylor, Stanford, LSU, and now Utah tied at 27 with 5-10 to go. And Arizona with the ball at midfield. Gerard Randall is still in at quarterback for Arizona. Can Randall lead him without Solomon? And can Utah take advantage of what's happened today in college football? Randall trying to run. Flag on the play as he gets thrown down by Marcus Williams. It'll be a loss of five. Let's see what the flag is. Holding. Offense number 67. The penalties decline. Second down. Great job by the Utes getting out to the outside and, and getting Randall. And, and here you see a new Solomon. We can only assume they're telling him, give us the helmet. You're not playing for the rest of this night. And obviously he wants to be out there competing with his team. Heartbreaking for the young man. And now it's Randall's opportunity to finish this one on senior night. Second down and 15. Baker. Baker will get two. So third and long coming up. Utah prides itself on its defense, on its special teams. Well, defense trying to make a play right now at third and 13. And I don't know if there's another defense in the Pac-12 I'd trust more in this situation than the Utes. Randall. Pressure. Gets rid of it. Down the field, and that's incomplete. So after the turnover, 4th and 13 coming up. Pretty nice rush on Randall there that you would assume caused the errant throw. 
does a good job of stepping up, but Gianni Paul right there pushing Baker into him. Richrod trying to show him the fundamentals of getting rid of the ball. Drew Riddleman on to punt. Britton Covey is back at his own 10. Covey. He gets tackled at the six. Flag comes in late. We'll have to wait to see what this flag is. Might be a late hit. Yep. Unsportsmanlike on the Utes. Of course, I've been wrong before. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Return team number 47. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down, Utah. A long field ahead for Utah in a tie game at 27. Emotions are high here in Tucson. 27-27, Utah, Arizona. Us all tied at 27, 401 to go, and this is what's at stake right now in the South Division of the Pac-12. Utah, five and one, they control their own destiny. They had that loss against USC. They take on UCLA next week, but right now they're 97 yards away, and really don't need 97. You need a field goal, and they've got a really good one in Andy Phillips as a kicker. And a tie with USC gives USC the South because they beat them. Booker on the carry gets two yards on first down. Give credit to Utah's defense. They came up with that stop. Player down is Jake Matthews, the Mike linebacker for Arizona. And if you're Arizona right now, you're going, no. Another Mike linebacker going down. That would be the sixth Mike linebacker going down for the Wildcats, and that doesn't happen very often, six guys in one position. Well, with this, let's go to L.A. for a game break. Here's Jenny Taft. Well, Justin, thanks. More late-night Pac-12 action. Cal hosting Oregon State and trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Jared Goff connects with Maurice Harris, 13 yards for the touchdown. That's Goff's fourth. He has five tonight. Cal with the 44-18 lead over Oregon State in the third quarter. Jenny, thanks. Back here, Jake Matthews, the junior from right here in Tucson, is being treated on the field. Petros mentioned it. This will be the sixth Mike linebacker to go down for Arizona this year, which is just virtually unheard of. Yeah, they've brought up guys that used to play safety to play linebacker like pa Paul McGlure Jr. and, and Tellus Jones of the bandit has become the rusher as opposed to Scooby Ryder, Churi Churi. And some years they just happen like that, but Jeff Castile, who's been at it for 31 years, the defensive coordinator for Rich Rod and this Arizona team, told us he'd never seen anything like this in his entire career. And that's a long-spanning career. And, and coaches don't like to make excuses, but, but certainly losing Scooby Wright, the most impactful defensive player, and there's Scooby right there. In all of college football, last year and his freshman year, he was lights out too. That, that takes a lot of air out of a team. A look at the standings in the Pac-12. And you will see exactly what is at stake. Stanford, the loss to Oregon today. Utah at 5-1, trying to go to 6-1, but they're facing 2nd and 7 from their own 6-yard line. Devontae Booker in, takes the handoff. Booker. Breaks through a couple of tackles and diving forward. Let's see where the spot is. It's going to be third down. This is his time. Devontae Booker's time in the fourth quarter. And you know they want to feed him. And that's going to open things up in the run game and the pass game for Travis Wilson. But first things first, third and short. Third and less than a yard here. Booker, he's got the first down. 
The clock will stop as he gets up to the 25, gets 13 yards. Sir Thomas Jackson, who came in for Jake Matthews, makes the tackle. And watch his legs come to life the second he sees that hole and how wide open it is. Remember, another linebacker just went down for the Cats, Jake Matthews, and Booker able to exploit it. Booker had 150 yards rushing last week. He's got 139 here tonight. Wilson dancing around gets shoved out. Jarvis McCall Jr. shoves him out of bounds. A pickup of one for Travis Wilson. And don't forget Utah, one of the best kickers in the business in Andy Phillips. His long this year is 53 yards. He's connected tonight, 34 and 37. Utah does have all three timeouts remaining. Two minutes to play. Booker takes the handoff. Slips through two defenders and gets up to the 31 to get five yards. Third down coming up, DeAndre Miller with the tackle. And I think Booker was surprised to get the ball on that play. That's more of a play that's designed to, designed to stretch that defense out and create a little bit of a lane for Wilson, as we've seen earlier in the game. Interesting choice by Wilson to give it to Booker, and he made something out of it. Third and four. Eight of 13 on third downs today. Look out for Britton Covey. Wilson throws, and it's incomplete. Dropped by Tyrone Smith. Well, they had the right idea. They wanted to use Covey as a decoy on a little bit of a bubble route and get Smith down the field, and he was open. Got some good separation, and, and that's just a drop ball. Everybody out there executed pretty well, and it was a good play call. They just couldn't finish the play. And now we mention special teams so often with Utah. They're going to rely on Tom Hackett to get the ball down the field, make it a long field for Arizona. Hackett. Devontae Neal, fair catch is made around the 21-yard line. A 57-yard punt. Well, there's a new tradition in college basketball you're not going to want to miss. The Gavit Tip-Off Games pits the Big East against the Big Ten for four days of incredible action beginning Tuesday. Nebraska against Villanova right here only on FS1. A new Solomon on the sideline took that hit before by Jason Fanica. And they took his helmet. So it's up to Gerard Randall. With 108 to go, two timeouts remaining. Jared Baker, the running back. We haven't seen Nick Wilson in a while. Baker takes the handoff, and Baker gets through to the secondary. Baker able to spin up the 39, gets 19. Justin Thomas brings him down. It doesn't look like Nick Wilson's going to finish. Obviously, a new Solomon's not going to finish. Remember the explosiveness in the legs of Baker and Randall. Baker up the middle. And does Utah call a timeout? Excuse me, does Arizona, and Arizona will call the timeout. Timeout, Arizona, their second of the half. will be 30 seconds in length. Casey Scourin practicing his career long, excuse me, his season long is 48. He's hit two tonight, 47 and 40. This was the injury to a new Solomon. In this fourth quarter, going to slide, gets hit by Fanica. Shaken up, has to come out. Randall trying to go deep, intercepted by Justin Thomas. Devontae Booker gives it back as he took the hit by Worthy. And here we are now with 49 seconds to go, second and six. Randall rolling out to his right, throws incomplete as he was pressured. Marcus Williams applying the pressure. And does Randall have the ability to throw the ball well enough for Arizona to win this football game? That, that is a really, really tough call if you're an Arizona Wildcat fan and Utah's defense putting big pressure on the young man as well. 
That black line is where Arizona needs to get to to be in range for Casey Scourin. Three of nine on third downs tonight for Arizona. On third and six, Randall down the sideline and double coverage. And it's incomplete as Marcus Williams had come over to help out Corey Butler Bird, Caleb Jones, the intended receiver. Very close to being a pick. The right idea throwing it to their most explosive receiver, and he's had a pretty good night, Caleb Jones. But Marcus Williams doing a good job of getting in position, and Jones ended up having to play defense there. Drew Riggleman on to punt with 36 seconds. Britton Covey, the dangerous return man. Covey picks it up and gets hit right away as he is down at the six. 26 seconds to go. All tied up at 27. College football and FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. And if we are headed to overtime, Justin, you have to think that even though they're on the road with the new Solomon out, the Utes and their starting quarterback have an advantage. Senior night here in Tucson. What a fight the Wildcats have put up against number 10 Utah as Utah is going to take a knee and play for overtime. Pac-12 after dark, why not go to overtime? Again, following the loss by Stanford earlier tonight, this game has huge importance for the Pac-12 with Utah ranked number 10 in the nation. As we go to overtime, you get a chance to see, get a refresher on the overtime rules. We'll see the coin toss. Each team gets that possession at the opposition 25-yard line. Both teams get a timeout. And, and if we then, go that deep, <laughs> then it gets really chaotic. Turns into a real circus with the two-point conversions that you have to run. Remember the advantage with the kicker that Utah has. Arizona's kicker is not bad. But Utah with their entire offensive arsenal and Arizona without a new Solomon. And we haven't seen Nick Wilson exactly. in a while. The captain's coming out. The referee, Lan Clark, will bring them in. Yeah, no, welcome, welcome to overtime, guys. Each team will get the ball first and 10 at the 25-yard line and with a chance to score. Each team will get one timeout. We're going to flip this coin. The winner will have the choice of offense or defense or which end of the field to play. The other team will have the remaining choice. Same coin, heads, tails, heads, tails. Captain, what is your call? Tails. The call is tails. And it is heads. Which end of the field would you like to play? That one. That one. Arizona has won the toss and elected to go on defense. First down. You heard it there. Arizona will play defense first. Travis Wilson and the Utes offense to start overtime when we come back. We go to overtime here in Tucson thanks to zero combined points in that fourth quarter. The last points of the game, a six-yard touchdown run by a new Solomon with 4-0-1 left in the third. Of course, Solomon not available after the hit. They took the helmet away from him, so Travis Wilson, after Arizona won the toss, will start at the 25. Devontae Booker in the backfield with him. Number 10, Utah on the road against Arizona. On first down, Wilson outside to Covey. And Covey up to the 21, gets four, tackled by Jamar Allah. That is number 10, the 10th tackle of the game for Allah. 
Now, those three guys are the people you worry about. Covey, Booker, and, of course, Travis Wilson throwing or running the ball. But remember, Utah's gotten some good play from some other offensive weapons in this game. Harrison Hanley, the tight end. Kenneth Scott's done pretty well with a touchdown catch, and Bubba Poole as well. And Bubba Poole's in the backfield with Booker and Wilson. Now Poole goes in motion. Booker can't break free of the tackle. Wrapped up by Reggie Gilbert. Third and six coming up here for Utah. You know, we talk a lot about the guys for Arizona's defense that are out, but what about the guys that are still in? Guys like Reggie Gilbert, who have been beat up and doing a great job all season. Jeff Castile really has some heroes out there that have been doing yeoman's work all season long. Third and six. Booker splits out. Wilson, pressure on the run. Wilson nowhere to go, and he gets shoved out at the 25. Knocked out by Anthony Lopez. You got to give credit to these Wildcats digging down deep and finding something. They're always going to have the advantage if they're running sideline to sideline, and Lopez does a good job of chopping down that tree and forcing a field goal. A 40-yard field goal attempt here for Andy Phillips. He's two for two on the night. And this one is off the upright and in. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Do you know how hard it is just to hit the upright if you're throwing the ball from five yards away? And these kickers hit it all the time. This one from 40, and to have it hit in the right spot and go through. You might be looking back on that for Utah's season for a long time, but Arizona's still a great opportunity to finish this game with a touchdown. A, a new Solomon is out. Gerard Randall is in. He's 0 for 4. Can he make a throw to win the game? On first down, it's Jared Baker, gets two. Lotu Lely with the stop, second down and eight. A touchdown for Arizona, and they win it. A field goal, and we go to double overtime. Randall will run it. Gerard Randall trying to push that pile. Gets four yards. I like the play call there. Just a straight quarterback run. Get Randall hit. Get him going. Get him doing what he does best. Get him some confidence for a big third down. Third and four coming up. Randall entered this game 683 rushing yards. Second on the team. Looks back to the sideline. Play clock at one. Did they get the timeout? They did. Just in time. Prior to the expiration of the play clock, timeout, Arizona, the first of the period, and last. It'll be my, 30 seconds in length. My lip reading, I believe, said, what are you waiting on? Rich Rodriguez to Gerard Randall. Rich Rod having a little bit of trouble communicating with his less experienced quarterback. Again, a new Solomon. Went down in the second half with an apparent concussion or some concussion-like symptoms. He, he got hit underneath his shoulder pads and went down. And here's Rich Rod talking to Gerard Randall saying, get that ball snapped or something like that. Third and four. Again, Nick Wilson not in. It's Jared Baker at tailback.
Randall in the shotgun. High snap. Randall keeping it. And he gets stuffed. Trying to improvise there. Fourth down coming up. And without a lot of ability to throw the ball downfield, Utah really able to pin their ears back and wait for Randall and make physical tackles on him. And here we go. A chance to tie it. Casey Scourin for a 35-yard field goal attempt to force double overtime. He's hit from 47, hit from 40. And Scourin's kick is good. Double overtime, here we come. Casey Scourin, three for three on the night, and we're tied at 30, heading to double OT. All here in the desert, Utah and Arizona, as we go to the second overtime, a look at the top 10, what has transpired today. Three of the top 10 teams have lost. Baylor, Stanford, LSU, Oklahoma State had a dramatic comeback at Iowa State. And here is Utah tied in double overtime, and Arizona will start with the ball here in this second OT. Can they get anything going with the backup quarterback, Gerard Randall? Randall and Baker in the backfield. Randall to pass on first down, goes up high, and it is caught! Touchdown! Phillips runs a good route, gets some separation. Booby Hobbs, no hands on Phillips at all at the line of scrimmage, and that's what enables him to get behind. A lot of hand fighting there. They probably could have called P.I., but how about that? Gerard Randall with a perfect throw into the arms of Nate Phillips, the junior, at a Chandler, Arizona. Scouring the extra point. It's going to take a touchdown from Utah to go to triple overtime. And how about this? In the previous 13 plays with Randall at quarterback, a total of 44 yards on that one pass play. 25 yards, and they've got a seven-point lead. That's why you keep playing. What an effort by Arizona here tonight. Undermanned on senior night. And now it's going to take a touchdown for Utah. Remember the mental fortitude of this Utah team. Remember the philosophy and attitude of their head coach. They reflect it on the field. Wilson rolling out to his right. Throwing incomplete was looking for the tight end, Harrison Hanley. Jamar Allah on the coverage. Utah really thought they had a shot there. Getting the tight end free into the corner. That was their home run chance. Let's see what they decide to do on second down. Devontae Booker, 143 rushing yards on the night. They swing it out to him. Booker gets wrapped up at the 22, picks up three. And it's third down and seven. DeAndre Miller, Luca Bruno combined for the tackle. And that's a really physical tackle by DeAndre Miller. Nice head of steam by Devontae Booker, and he had a little seam, but he was not able to get through it. Obvious two-down territory right now here for Utah. It is loud here at Arizona Stadium. Running the option, the pitch to Booker, nowhere to go. He's going to lose a yard. Fourth and eight. The Aaron throw on first down really hurt. 
Travis Wilson. Let's see if he fumbled here. I think maybe the left knee was down before that ball came out, and that was the ruling on the field. Utah will take a timeout, facing fourth and eight. Let's take one more look at this. Watch for the knee, watch for the ball. Knees down, ball's out. It's really a bang-bang play. Be tough to overturn, I believe. They're getting ready to storm the fields if they can pull off the upset. Let's bring in Mike Pereira one more time here. Mike, what do you see on this play? What are your thoughts? I'll tell you, it's one of these that are really close. You see the ball starting to come out just as the knee hits the ground. And in my opinion, when they're that close, you stay with what's called on the field. Watch when the right knee gets to the ground. That's just when the ball starts to come out. Since they ruled them down, in my opinion, if it was me, I would stay with that call. Fourth and eight coming up. Already three top tens have lost. And now they're going to review this play. Now, I'm not sure his knee didn't skip against the ground before it kind of rested there. And then the ball came out. We just heard what Mike Pereira said. Because it's so close, he would stay with a call that was made on the field. Booker with one very costly fumble earlier here in the second half. Watch that knee. No, it doesn't skip on the ground there, but then it's down. Really close. And of course, if it's overturned, game over. Well, I've seen stranger things, but, but I agree with Mike. I'd be a fool not to. <laughs> So close. Too close to call, I think. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. Three consecutive years, Rich Rodriguez's Arizona Wildcats have knocked off a top 10 team. They're one play away from making it four in a row. They're one play away from winning four straight against Utah. And they're one play away from snapping a three-game losing streak and winning on senior night. Empty backfield on fourth and eight. Wilson stepping up. Has room to run if he wants it. He takes it. And Wilson has the first down. Big time decision by the four-year starter. Clutch play by Wilson. He was patient. He went to about three or four guys in his progression and then just decided to try to make it happen on his own. And he's a good runner with very good feet. We talked about it. High school volleyball star. Able to get that first down. And there's Rich Run. Living and dying with every play. First and 10 from the 11. Booker gets spun forward to the eight, gets three, second and seven coming up. You think about how close it has been. The field goal by Phillips in the first overtime hit the upright and one in. Facing a fourth and eight, Travis Wilson scrambles and converts. Second and seven now for Utah. Wilson. Pressure. He goes down. Sacked. He slips Sir Thomas Jackson. Sonny Formaono combined for the sack. A loss of nine on the play. Sir Thomas Jackson. Beating a double team and then getting by the back. Fuimaono as well. 
these guys have really come to life in the second half, and the crowd has provided great energy for this Arizona D. Third and 16. Wilson over the middle, incomplete, intended for the tight end, Harrison Hanley. So now it's fourth and 16. And really, you can get a first down, but the first down is at the one. You got to go for the end zone. The first down incompletion in this series, and then the sack really sent Utah back. They've not been able to relax and run their offense. They've been in panic mode the whole time. Fourth and 16. Wilson to the end zone. Incomplete Arizona wins. chance at that ball and with all the setbacks all year for the Wildcats what a way to finish on senior night here in Tucson the Dr. Pepper one-of-a-kind play of the game the only completion of the night for the backup quarterback Gerard Randall the touchdown pass to Nate Phillips that is the one-of-a-kind Dr. Pepper play of the game. The final score here in Tucson, 37-30, Arizona with the upset. Right now, it's to the UFC 